Hi, everybody. Sven Latinovich here again. And today I get the privilege of speaking to Dean Horace Anderson. He is the Dean of Pace's Law School in White Plains. He used to teach at Pace as well. He taught law and before that he practiced law. So today he would like to tell uh, all of us a few sentences of wisdom about why it's important to learn about technology even in his field of law. So Dean Anderson, do you mind introducing yourself a bit in more detail? Sure, sure absolutely. So uh, as you said, Sven, I'm uh, the Dean of the law school at Pace now, the Howe Law School. Uh, and I still do teach, as, although not as, as much as I used to. Uh, and I've been teaching at Pace since uh, 2004. And I teach mainly in my area of specialty, which is intellectual property. Um, that's the area that I practiced in when I was in practice. And it's an area that I still find fascinating. So I love teaching it. And for me, you know, um, technology is important professionally because the area of law that I teach is one that attempts to regulate uh, some aspects of technology. And so there's a close connection between what I do in the law and uh, what's going on in the tech space. But even outside of uh, teaching law and being a lawyer and being an IP lawyer specifically, um, I think it's very important for people to get exposure to, uh, to technology just as part of uh, participating in society. The same way I think that everybody should study government and civics, everybody should study a little bit of technology. Uh, so I'm a lawyer, but back when I was in college, was that freshman year or sophomore year? I think it was freshman year. I took a course called CSE 120, uh, Computer Science and Engineering 120, which was a basic programming course. Uh, and to this day, there are concepts that I learned in that course that help me understand the world. I can understand better something that I read in the news because I understand um, the difference between source code and object code, or I understand um, the process that a coder might use in order to debug a program, or because I've done it, unfortunately spent many long nights trying to debug programs that I wrote. Um, and even though the language that I was taught in is, um, is not one of the sort of sexy new uh, coding languages, the whole idea of how you structure uh, a program and how you put together a system made up of individual programs that are supposed to work together and the whole idea of translating from a set of uh, business needs, for example, into actual code, that's a process that I went through uh, both in that course and a little bit in some of the jobs that I've had. And even though I'm not a coder, understanding that whole process makes it easy for me to understand what's going on in the world today. So a lot of what's going on around us, we understand better if we have a little technology in our background, even if we're not actually banging out code for you know, 24, 48 hours at a stretch. Yeah, yeah, makes uh, makes perfect sense, and that's actually a great segue into the into my next question, which is, um, if you could tell us a bit more about how technology has impacted your work as a dean of a school as well, and then if you could give us a few more details just about IP law and patents and all that stuff. Sure. So the biggest way um, that my work has been impacted by technology. Um, can be explained with what we're doing now. The way you and I are talking right now, uh, that's the way we taught all of our courses to finish out the spring semester. Uh, that's the way we are uh, teaching some of our courses now. And for every one of the courses we're teaching, uh, technology as a component or the remote uh, uh, modality as a component. So what it means for me as a dean is not that we are giving up uh, in-person instruction or in-person interaction, but it means that we have this really valuable tool that um, in this current moment where people are nervous about um, being around other people, where people have actual risk that they need to manage when it comes to being around other people, uh, technology is vital to my students being able to make progress toward their degrees 
while also managing their health and safety and that of their families. So that, that's the example that jumps to mind right away that for being able to meet our students where they are so that they can focus on their studies, um, technology has been key over the past five months and will be key this entire semester at least. Yes, thank um, you. No, sorry, you were saying I don't want to. Oh, I was going to say, so that's, that's the biggest way. And I think going forward, um, even when we're beyond this pandemic, um, the availability of the technology that we have now will help us shape the best, you know, sort of personalized uh, education experience that we can for our students. So I think one of the things that we, we have always, um, you know, tried and, and didn't do as well as we wanted to was to incorporate technology into our instruction. Um, I think there are more tools available now. We've been through a bit of a baptism of fire in terms of using them. So I think in the future, we'll be able to, you know, um, serve more students and serve them better using technology without giving up the personal touch. Like, I don't want to make it sound like we're going to hand um, our program over to Zoom and just let them <laughs> run it. We're still going to be, uh, you know, uh, injecting that same personal touch. And I think Pace as a university always uh, tries to with its students, but now we've got another tool that'll make it a little bit easier to get things fine-tuned for each student. And do you maybe have also one just brief example of how te tech has changed IP law or any of oh, your other fields of expertise? Yeah. Sure. So, um, I mean, one thing is that tech is always impacting IP law. Uh, because IP law in the U.S. includes, um, number one, some uh, uh, areas of, of, of creation and invention that are inherently technological. So um, computer programs generally are covered by the Copyright Act in the United States, um, and there are all sorts of, um, uh, so all sorts of uh, systems um, equipment and their programming that are covered under the patent um, laws in the U.S. And so there's always there's been a connection at least for the last uh, 50 years on the computer system side, uh, and going back even before that when it comes to more uh, mechanical and machine-like inventions. So there's always been that connection. I think what's what's changed over the last 15 or so years is that technology has become a part of what people would have called soft subjects in the past, right? So now you can't think about the music industry without thinking about networks and um, computer technology because there is so much in the way of music recording, production, and distribution that depends on computers and networks. So now um, technology is affecting even the way we think about protecting the copyright in a song. Um, now we've got the ability to distribute not just music, but also movies and television and, um, and literary works with those technology tools as well. So now this, there's a whole other element of, um, that the law has to catch up with and deal with that has to do with the ability to very easily copy, very easily distribute, very easily alter um, something that's already in existence and something that was created by somebody else. Um, and so the, the law has more work to do in those areas outside of technology, music, uh, movies, uh, literature, than it did before. So the, the, the impact is not just on the places where we always saw impact, but on these new um, areas of endeavor as well. Thank you so much. I think you really brought it home with um, comparing, bringing um, the law into the music and film industries and just the entertainment industries. Because yeah, it's definitely impacted it a lot. Yeah. Um, so do you have any final thoughts for the students just in terms of how they could apply this technology and this class to their own fields? Oh, sure. Um, you know, the, I, I took a really basic computer science course when I was a freshman in, in college, as I mentioned, and um, I ended up 
after college, even though I didn't major in computer science, ended up working for a technology consulting company, which at the time was called Anderson Consulting. Now it's called Accenture. Um, and we work with clients to help translate their business problems into technology solutions. And the fact that I had that exposure um, as a freshman in college uh, made it so much easier for me to understand that translation, how you go from a need to a technology solution. Uh, and so that, that course ended up being really one of the most valuable courses I ever took, even though I didn't major in the field. Um, it's been so, so good for me as a foundation for other things I've done. Perfect. I think that's the perfect way to end the interview. So thank you so much again, Dean Anderson. Students, good luck. We'll be back with some more talks with tech experts. Take care.